Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in Grade 5, we are in Module 4, Fractions, and we are working on Lesson Number 17. And tonight, that means that we're relating decimal and fractional multiplication to each other. So we've been doing a lot of our fractional multiplication, but not as decimal. So tonight, we start to make that transition. So we see that decimals and fractions are really just two forms of the same kinds of things. Let's take a look at a few problems from tonight's homework. Problem number one. I'm not going to do 1B for you. I'll get you started. But I wanted to go through the instructions for problem number one and do one of the problems with you completely. So let's multiply and model. Rewrite each expression as a number sentence with decimal factors. The first one is done for you. Oh, interesting. So one of the things I'm noticing here, so they have this problem, 1A, 1 tenth times 1 tenth. Let's see. What do they do here? Well, I'm going to look at the diagram first because I always like my models first. And I think I see what they did here. First, they shaded in one tenth, right? This is a unit box. So this is one out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that right here is one tenth. Oh, I see that's labeled right there. And then they said, oh, we need one tenth of one tenth. So working the other way, working horizontally, they divided this tenth, this column, into 10 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And they shaded in only one of those parts. There's 1 tenth. And it looks to me like that makes this 1 hundredth. Now let's see how it looks over here. Hmm. Well, I see 1 tenth times 1 tenth. They said, okay, well, we can multiply across the numerator. That's 1 times 1. And the denominator is 10 times 10. Now, 1 times 1 is 1. 10 times 10 is 100. And that means that this is, in fact, 100th. But this last part is interesting because I'm noticing that they're trying to, they're doing this basic problem, but they're doing it as decimals rather than as fractions. There's 1 tenth, same as that, times 1 tenth, which is that, equals 100th, which is the same as our answer up there. Awesome. Well, I'm going to get you started a little bit on 1b. 6 tenths times 2 tenths. Well, let's see. I'm going to go and work in blue. I'm going to say 6 tenths. Let's see. What if we then... I think we just need to share it in. Oops. I'm going to shade in 6. 6 of these tenths. Right? That right here is a fairly sloppy 6 tenths. Right? 6 out of the 10 vertical bars are all now shaded in. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and work on your two tenths. I'm thinking you're going to work horizontally, but I'll leave that to you to decide. See what you need to shade in and then see what your answer is. Now remember, part of the instructions here are to uh, express a number sentence with decimal factors. So again, I'm going to tell you that the beginning factor, let's see, six tenths is that times, and I'm going to let you do the rest, um, times something else equals something else. I'll let you guys work on that part of it. Let's take a look at problem number 1c. Problem number 1c is a different kind of a problem for us. 1 tenth times 1.6. Wow, all of our fractions in the past have been fractions that have been between 0 and 1, but this one, this decimal, 1.6. Hmm. Well, let's see. I remember that each of the whole reason that we drew these unit boxes is that this is 1, right? And this is 1.6, so I'm thinking that 1.6 means we're going to need to go like that. This is going to be 1.6, right? This is a whole unit. Sorry for the sloppiness around the edges, right? That's 1, and then I need to shade in 6 tenths more, right? There we go. I think that's right. 1.6 is 1 whole plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 10, right? 6 tenths. That's 1.6. Awesome. Now I'm going to switch to red. So that was this part. And I'm going to switch to red for this part. One tenth. So now we need to look at this shape and this shape, and we need to divide that into tenths. Oh, and well, since these are pre-divided for us, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, and now we need to cross hatch and, and shade in just one of those tenths. So I'm going to do that down here all the way across. Okay. Let's see, how many parts? Each of these little squares is a hundredth. How many of them are there? Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. It looks to me like we have sixteen hundredths 
shaded in, right? Each unit box has been divided up into a hundred little blocks. This one has as well. And how many of those little things, that's each one hundredth, have been shaded in? Well, 16 of them. Now, I'm going to see if this works out for our, um, our decimal equation. So, this part is already in decimal form, but one-tenth we'll have to rewrite. So, that's one-tenth times 1.6 equals... Oh, and let's see if we can rewrite our answer. 16 hundredths. Well, 16 hundredths is just like that, right? 16 hundredths? Awesome. So that's our decimal equation version of our sort of mixed uh, equation that we were given at the beginning. Mixed because it's partly fractions, partly decimals. And I think 16 hundredths makes some sense here, right? One-tenth of 1 1.6. Well, in our old uh, module one place value chart, right, we would have taken each of those values, the one and the six, and move them one place value to the right. So the one would become a tenth, and the six tenths would become hundredths, and that's exactly what happened, right? The one became a tenth, and the six became a hundredth, and we ended up with sixteen hundredths, which is exactly what our model suggested we would have. Awesome. Excellent. Well, let's take a look at one more problem from tonight's homework. And again, I'm going to kind of go through the one that they provide as a way of getting helping to get you there. Uh, we are going to multiply. The first few are started for you. Oh, okay. So, interesting. 4 times 6 tenths. Let's just see what they did here. 4 times 6 tenths. 4 times... Oh, I see what they did. They just took the decimal form and they rewrote it as a fraction. 4 times 6 tenths. Awesome. Oh, and once they had that, they noticed that this means you just multiply in the denominator the 4 times 6, right? 4 copies of 6 tenths is the same as 4 times 6 tenths, or 24 tenths. Oh, and look at this last, very clever. 24 tenths is the same as 2.4, right? If we had 24 tenths, we would bundle up 10 of them and make a whole. We would bundle up 10 more of them and make another whole. We'd have 4 tenths left over, and that would have given us 2 wholes and 4 tenths. Sure enough, they're right. 2.4. All right, well, they came up with the answer, but I'm going to write it in there just to make it official. Let's take a look at 2D. 7 times 3 tenths. Well, let's see, this looks very similar, right? This is 7 copies of 3 tenths, right? Oh, and once we've done that, we can make sure that these are both in the in the numerator. 7 times 3 tenths, okay. What's 7 times 3? Our little math fact says 7 times 3 is 21 tenths. Sure, and 21 tenths, let's see, well, 10 tenths would make a whole. 10 more tenths would make another whole. And that would just leave us with one more. So I think this is the same as two, oops, two and one-tenth, right? Oh, and two and one-tenth is also the same as two and one-tenth, like that. So no matter which way we want to express it, this way or this way, I think they're wanting us to do it as decimals, 2.1 or two and one-tenth. Beautiful. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Good luck with your homework tonight as you make this conversion over to decimal fractions. We'll see you next time. Take care.